Today I'm going to be talking with you about the social web and its influence on information organisation and libraries. What exactly is the social web? The social web focuses more on the creation of content than its consumption. It describes a new generation of web tools which are explicitly designed to encourage interaction and participation. The design focus of the web has shifted away from mere content delivery and towards applications that support, facilitate and generate value from user content creation. We can see evidence of the social web in what we, consider, what we generally term social media or social networking platforms, for example Facebook, Instagram, social bookmarking platforms, for example Pinterest or Digo, and uh, other content collection or content sharing platforms including YouTube, Flickr, uh, Pixabay, anything that allows individuals to interact with other individuals and to create and or share content via the internet. This contrasts with the first iteration of the internet where you require it required quite a few technical skills in order to publish online and so we had a very small number of people creating content and most people accessing and consuming content from the internet rather than contributing to it uh, of their own volition. So how does the social web influence the practice and business of the library? It does so in many ways. One way and most obviously is through outreach. The social web allows the library to connect with people who are not necessarily physically within the library space. In taking advantage of this means that the library can connect with users and offer their services by communicating these through channels where users might be uh, connecting and uh, existing with other people rather than um, having to wait for them to physically enter the library. So we've got two examples here from in, in, Instagram. The first is from the State Library of Queensland where they're celebrating Library Lovers Day on the 14th of February and using this opportunity to advertise their new look user-friendly website. So basically they're taking advantage of a popular day and uh, using it to connect with and reach out to potential users as well as those people who are already aware of what the State Library does for, uh, offers in terms of services. This particular uni library is taking advantage of Instagram to connect with users in order to reach out to them and share that they are providing information at a stand for student orientation. Normally, without the use of a tool like this, the library would be only able to connect with and offer support and provide information about their services to those people who physically walked past their stand on the university campus. But using Instagram, they're able to advertise uh, and connect and share the types of things that they're able to, that they're able to offer to students in a space where students are likely to encounter them uh, be in, when they're being on when they're online. They've also used quite a number of hashtags, for example, graduate research orientation, in order to collect a much wider audience because they recognise probably that not too many people actually follow their Insta the library Instagram account, but that people might have a hashtag search or be subscribed to the hashtag which is much wider, for example, research or graduate. And by doing so, they're actually able to harvest the interest and attention of a much wider uh, community of people and let them know of the services that they're offering. Along a similar line is the capacity to use socials, uh, the social web for marketing and promotion. Here we've got two examples from school libraries and they're both on Facebook. The first library has uh, advertised the fact that they have had a celebration for International Women's Day and a visit from a well-known uh, young adult author. Now they've actually been able to leverage the author's Facebook page as well. The author was advertising her own presence at the school on her site and then the library was able to reshare that 
uh, and and um, leverage that um, information on their own Facebook site. So understanding that their audience is probably the uh, uh, the parents of the students on Facebook rather than the students themselves. They've included lots of photos and evidence of the types of things that students are able to engage with when they participate with the school library. A second is to talk about the blind date with a, with a book uh, activity that this particular library has been, um, has, has been celebrating. And this again is able to break down those physical walls and promote the, uh, the activities and the uh, interesting things that this library is doing with a much wider audience so that those who may not physically enter the library are able to see what the library is doing. Again, with being on Facebook and the audience probably being mostly parents rather than children uh, or students, um, the aim probably is to promote the, the activities of the library so that the parents might say, hey, I saw that your library at school had this particular campaign today. Did you go in and have a look at it and start that conversation? So even if the actual students of the school aren't necessarily seeing the um, the marketing and promotion, the conversation might still happen via the parents. Here we have an example of digital content curation being used as a way of connecting with users. So we have a high school who has created a Pinterest board with uh, different boards uh, according to genre and they're taking advantage of the colourful visual nature of Pinterest to provide access to all of the tempting book covers that sometimes we don't get to appreciate when we uh, shelve books um, with the spine facing out on the shelf. So students who might normally see a shelf full of books and all of the spines facing out and think, oh, there's just too many, I can't possibly choose and I don't know where to start, could look at the Pinterest board and immediately see the covers of the books in the genre of their choice and find that much more appealing. An added bonus is that when they click on the image of the book cover, they may well be taken to the author's website or a website promoting the book further. And so they can have a little taste of the book before they even get to the library to see if they would like to borrow it. So in this way, we've been, uh, the library has been able to use digital content curation to make an, appealing, uh, an appeal to students through the visual and the um, beautiful designs of the young adult book covers. User generated content is a lesser known and lesser used aspect of the social web for libraries, but some of the larger libraries are definitely taking advantage of it. Basically what the libraries are doing is using social web platforms in order to gather and harness the power of the crowd to create and collate data and information which otherwise might not have existed within the library. So here we have an example of Trove using um, Twitter to advertise the fact that they have opened up some of their scanned files of historical artifacts to the general public so that if the general public or individuals are interested, they can go in and make corrections of the OCR or optical character recognition uh, to make sure that the information that's been scanned in is actually accurate. There's quite a lot of people who like to spend a little bit of time each day or each week volunteering in this way, making text corrections on uh, historical documents which have been scanned in. And it, by appealing to the general populace to spend a little bit of time just doing a little part, a little, making a little contribution, they're actually able to get a lot more corrections done than if they simply relied on the staff of the library. And you can see here that they've already had an individual say, oh yes, I'm onto that now, I'd love to do that. And then Trove has been able to reply back immediately saying, greatly appreciated, thank you so much for taking the time to enrich our content and enrich our collection from your contribution of user generated content. A second example is the State Library of Queensland's use of history pin. So the State Library has a massive collection of photographic resources. However, 
uh, they uh, acknowledge that the photographs on their own could be greatly enriched if people could contribute further information about the photograph. Perhaps they don't know where the photograph was taken or what the photograph is, what geographical location the photograph is showing. Perhaps they don't know the history behind the image or the event or what's happening in the image. And so they're using PhotoPin to make those images public through their collection and asking people that if they recognize the photo or if they have a story or a memory that's associated with any of the pictures that have been donated to the library, that uh, you're able to add those, um, add those to the, the images and also pin the photos to the map uh, using history pins so that the geographic location can be identified. So uh, this is um, this is actually quite an interesting project because they're leveraging the knowledge and the history um, that the general public has and through the social web they're able to harness this information and enrich their collection.